Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at American Rifleman's Gun of the Year, winner of the Golden Bullseye, the LWRC Individual Carbine Direct Impingement Rifle. Now, LWRC and DI just really have never gone together. Uh, LWRC has always been known for uh, their extremely uh, well done ex executions of the external piston or short stroke and tappet piston. Uh, shown here is actually my personal rifle. This is a uh, individual carbine. Um, uh, external piston of course um, which has all of the LWRCI features on it it says you know, if you're looking for an external piston uh, rifle uh, this is really uh, one, one of the finest ones and probably one of the most proven ones on the market but in all the years that LWRC has been going you know, has been in, in business we really never heard anything about DI out of them um, it just it just really wasn't their niche however uh, LWRCI like many companies has gotten uh, a lot of questions uh, you know they you know, their customers do like the DI now contrary to popular belief <clears throat> not everybody believes that the uh, external piston is the way to go you do have a large segment of the uh, the industry uh, both military customers and commercial customers who still like the battle proven uh, you know d direct impingement rifles now LWRC uh, made a very wise business decision Rather than say, what we have is better than that, we're not going to bother with that, they answered the customer's questions to come out with an actual uh, direct impingement rifle, uh, which is smart. You're, you're seeing a little bit of a trend in this. Uh, you know, another company was POF uh, USA, another company that was uh, solely known for uh, external piston rifles. Um, they introduced the, uh, their, their DI rifle probably about a year or two ago, um, the Renegade, Renegade Plus. And now those uh, those have been some very successful rifles as well, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a close look at the LWRC individual carbine rifle, and we're going to go over this from uh, as usual from uh, from back to front. Uh, but I want to say a little bit about uh, LWRCI uh, as a whole. This is a company I know very 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 well. I've done some work with them. I've written some manuals for them. I've been out to their facility in uh, in Maryland. Uh, I, d I have a, a lot of incredible things to say about them. Uh, their facility uh, is second to none. Uh, they manufacture most of all of their components in-house, uh, which is really a, a hallmark of an, of, of an excellent company. Uh, a little bit about the company is, uh, if you look at uh, the owner, the owner is uh, Mr. Bernstein. Mr. Bernstein owns a number of companies. Uh, he owns a number of manufacturing companies who work in very different areas of the manufacturing processes. So LWRCI is able to outsource uh, components to other companies that Mr. Bernstein owns. So granted, they're all not all done by LWRCI, but they're all done by the same, um, the same family of companies. So they're able to manufacture all these parts to a very, very high quality, very high tolerance uh, internally. Now, the factory itself uh, is one of the few in the United States that actually manufactures their own barrels with a hammer forge machine. Um, I'm not sure how long ago, but I think it was, it was about a couple years ago that LWRCI purchased their own hammer forge machine. So all the barrels that you're seeing uh, coming out of LWRCI are, are made in-house. Uh, they do like to do the nitride baths as well uh, for, for their finish. Now inside they also manufacture with uh, advanced CNC machines, upper receivers, lower receivers, um, also polymers, um, stocks, uh, the components for the, uh, the rail. Um, they are, those are all manufactured in-house with mold machines and CNC machines uh, at LWRCI. Uh, they do utilize the uh, the Magpul Mo grips. Um, all the every single weapon has gone through an, an extensive quality control test. Their manufacturing process is also uh, very interesting to me as well. I've been to numerous manufacturers uh, throughout the country and, and some and, and some throughout the world. And uh, one of the things that was really standing out to me is their extensive use of fixtures in the assembly process. What these, what these, what these fixtures do is they guarantee um, that every rifle is manufactured the exact same way, same specifications. Uh, that's very important to have that consistency. That's how you have uh, standard, high-quality consistency in your manufacturing processes. Everything's done the same way every time. So pretty much every component you see on here, the rifle is the component is put into a fixture, and fixtures assist in uh, the performance. For instance, inserting inserting pins, uh, al alignments of, of particular parts, uh, those are all done uh, with precision uh, uh, instruments to be able to do that. Uh, those fixtures are, I think, very very invaluable 
Uh, for the most part, you know, I have seen, you do see fixtures at other manufacturers, of course, but to the extent that LWRC does it, uh, really is sort of a testament, I think, to their, why they have the quality that they do. And all this is not cheap. You know, you, you do, you do pay for it. It, it is expensive. Um, LWRCI, considering what they actually do in, in-house, I think the prices are very reasonable for as far as what they, what they actually cost. Um, but everything being done in-house, every rifle is test-fired. Um, they spend significant amounts of, of time, energy, and money uh, uh, testing testing weapons. LWRCI's individual carbine, this was actually a rifle that LWRCI designed uh, for the individual carbine pr uh, program. However, it was never submitted. Uh, LWRCI uh, made a very, very wise business decision that they realized that uh, the individual carbine program was not going anywhere. Uh, and they had the foresight to see that, so they said, "Well, we're not going to waste all this money because there was a, it's very expensive to uh, to submit to these programs. So we're just we're just not going to spend that money to do that." So they dropped out of the individual carbine program. Um, they said, "We're we're just not going to spend it, the money. We're we're going to move forward with our own production." And they moved that rifle line into production, which is what everything is based off of now. So, but they they re, they retain the individual carbine uh, name. Uh, part of the individual carbine has a lot of the uh, very unique aspects of the receivers, the ambidextrous aspects of it, which we're going to go over. Uh, all the individual carbine rifles that they had up until recently with the uh, with the DI uh, were all the external piston, short stroke tappet. LWRCI has gone through many variations uh, to improve the system. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a really close look at uh, this rifle itself. Looking at the, uh, the DI IC rifle, if you look, the lower receiver is actually identical to that used on uh, their external piston guns. Um, everything is the exact same. Um, it's uh, it has all the individual carbine ambidextrous features. We're going to go over um, each and every one of them. Looking at the, uh, the stock itself, we have the LWRCI stock. Uh, this is made in house. It has uh, two QD sockets on the right and left hand side. It does have sort of the triangular shape, which is very similar to that of the SOT mod stock. Uh, a standard uh, mil spec uh, receiver extension. The pistol grip is the Magpul Mo, rubberized, extremely uh, good to feel. Hands are wet or uh, whatever, it, it's not going to slip off of this. This is an excellent pistol grip. You do have an oversized uh, trigger guard as well, uh, which is actually also manufactured by LWRCI. Looking at the lower receiver itself, you have uh, a very well-made uh, ambidextrous safety. Uh, very high profile, it's on both sides. And you also have an ambidextrous bolt catch. Now, one of the nice things about this bolt catch here is it's not just a bolt release, it's a bolt catch. So by pushing in the lower portion of it and pulling the bolt back, it locks to the rear. And then you can also engage it. Of the rifles that are out there with the ambi lowers, uh, it only has the capability of a bolt release. But this one here actually works as both a release and a catch. Uh, you have a very well sculptured uh, receiver for as far as uh, the uh, the magazine release button. Uh, it does not stick out uh, beyond the actual fence itself, so it does protect it. We do have the forward assist, of course. Um, we have a very special bolt carrier, which we're going to look at in a few minutes. Uh, in the back, we have the mag or the uh, LWRCI skirmish sights, uh, which is an excellent sight system. Uh, we'll take a little closer look at that in a few minutes as well. And we're going to flip it over real quick. The uh, IC does come with a UID code on it as well. And as you can see, again, the ambidextrous uh, safety. Now, this has a longer arm on the uh, left-hand side. And by depressing right here, you have uh, ambidextrous magazine release. So looking forward, you have uh, the same kind of a handguard you have on the external piston rifles, but, I, but it's designed for the, uh, the DI. So you have a 1913 rail. You also have a... a has some half cuts in here it makes it a little bit lighter you have the front skirmish sight as well the front skirmish uh, sight has sort of a, a look similar to an ak or, or an h and k it's a standard uh four position uh, sight now the rail itself uh, you have these removable segments here you have removable 1913 rail segments and you have what they call their snake skin covers um, and you also have a uh a vertical or a grip on the back here similar to, to, to Magpul's grip. On the back of here you have a QD socket. Uh, you have a, a stop in the front here. Uh, I also have a, a 1913 rail segment here for, for putting on a bipod. I have one over here for actually a, uh, a flashlight and when we flip it over they have one as well that is uh, set up for a uh, QD attachment. 
Uh, these are things that I'm quite fond of. I like uh, having the ability to either put on an actual uh, something that's good for your hands uh, versus some kind of a rail panel like this where you know you're just you're protecting the rail but you're still going to get the heat off of it. Now the barrel itself, uh, one and seven inch twist, uh, nitride coated, um, has a standard A2 type flash suppressor on it or compensator. Now the the uh, the gas block is also very, I'm very pleased to say that it's pinned in place. It's not placed on with set screws. Uh, so that's going to ensure you for as far as durability and reliability over the long haul. Uh, also for as far as making this a uh, selective fire rifle, um, that's also going to be a major reliability enhancement. The barrel on here is a heavy contour barrel. It's the same one that was put on the individual carbine. <clears throat> as you can see the spiral fluting as well. Uh, the spiral fluting uh, assists in cooling um, by, by removing some of the material. Also decreases in weight. Um, it's another the, the barrels that, manufa that are manufactured by LWRCI are some incredibly accurate barrels, and many many people uh, between them being hammer forged uh, and the spiral and, the, and everything you're really looking at an ideal barrel. Um, for as far as durability is concerned, I've shot thousands and thousands of rounds uh, more recently out of these rifles. Um, I have no issue with you know accuracy degradation or nothing and durability. Um, it, it's absolutely all there. The optic I chose on here is just uh, one of the uh, AR optics. It's, uh, it's by Bushnell. Uh, this is a uh, it's, it's, it's a low cost uh, option for an optic uh, for close range. Uh, it's a it's a four power. Uh, it does just it does just fine. Um, I've I've been testing these for for quite a while. You know it's you can actually spend as much money if not more money on an optic as you do the actual rifle itself. Uh, so you know it just depends on how much money that you want to spend. But for a relatively low cost, uh, this is uh, this this scope will do pretty much anything that you want it to do. The scope is mounted on an Aero Precision uh, mount. It's manufactured 7075 T6 aircraft aluminum, uh, which is an incredible uh, lightweight uh, scope mount. And the receivers, uh, both upper and lower receiver, are your, are your standard uh, military uh, type 7075 T6 aircraft aluminum. Uh, entirely unique to uh, LWRCI for as far as uh, their sculpture uh, and the way that they look. However, they're uh, they're they're compatible with uh, any any mil spec lower receiver that's out there. You can you can purchase upper receivers from LWRCI, and you can put them on any type of a lower receiver. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the bolt carrier group. Now the bolt carrier group uh, is a really really uh, well made component. Nothing that LWRC put on here was standard. Uh, all of it was uh, what you would say. Uh, definitely advanced. The bolt themselves, uh, the bolt is actually a very standard uh, design. The major difference is, is the actual carrier itself. We do have the nickel boron type coating, but if you notice, there's the, the carrier key is very different. The actual tombstone is all one piece into the, into the actual uh, carrier itself. The key is manufactured of stainless steel. It is first uh, screwed in place and then once it's aligned, it's, uh, it's, it's pinned in place. What this does is it prevents any gas loss possibility out of the bolt carrier itself. On a standard DI type rifle, the, the only places you're really actually going to lose uh, gas is through the carrier key. Uh, you can lose it through the, uh, the actual gas port itself. And in some cases, uh, you can also uh, lose it from not having uh, you know, proper serviceable gas rings. Well, this totally eliminates any any possibility of the carrier key causing any issues whatsoever. Um, now, standard rifles, uh, I definitely have seen some come loose. I've seen some actually break off. Uh, it's not common, but it does happen. The late uh, 1990s to early 2000s, Colt had had an issue uh, with carrier keys coming loose. There was a, a major issue with it within the U.S. military. That problem was solved by uh, changing the torque, the torque uh, settings from 45 inch pounds up to 55 to 58 inch pounds. Um, it somewhat took care of it, but you still had issues with uh, carrier key screws breaking. This was an excellent uh, enhancement. In fact, uh, during the individual carbine program, uh, there was also a product improvement program for the M4 carbine. And part of the PIP program was an enhanced bolt and bolt carrier group. This actually was submitted by uh, LWRCI to the U.S. government for um, the enhanced bolt, bolt carrier group. That, pro that program was a complete flop because uh, several of these bolt carriers that were submitted by different manufacturers um, had major improvements over the standard mil spec one, but since they decided to only test them to 6,000 rounds, of course they weren't going to find one that was going to be superior to what they already had or uh, be able to justify uh, any changes. Uh, I, th I do believe if uh, they would have gone to 
20,000 rounds, 30,000 rounds, they would have seen the merits of several of these bolt carrier groups, including this one. Um, LWRC does have their own uh, bolt as well. Uh, right now they're, uh, they're not available, but they do have an enhanced bolt uh, as well. This was a, a major reliability enhancement, and you can buy this as a, uh, a weapon upgrade for your, your own rifle too right, from LWRCI. This is a part that they actually uh, they, do, they do sell, and uh, it's well worth, well worth the money. Uh, they did a, an incredible job. Next thing we're going to take a look at is the charging handle itself. The charging handle itself is ambidextrous, as you can see. Very, very strong, very, very well built. Um, you pull on either side. As you can see, the actual uh, the actual latches are very, very large. They're oversized, so you're, you're going to be able to get a good a good perch on it to get them back. I'll we'll get the inside of the uh, lower receiver. This got some very interesting things with it as well. Now, all of the internal trigger components uh, are also nickel boron coated. The hammer trigger and disconnector. Uh, what that does is it gives a, a smoother mating surfaces between uh, you know the sears on the trigger, the hammer, as well as even the disconnector. So I definitely would consider that some kind of you know definitely an upgrade. Due to the fact this is a heavy has a heavy barrel, you do have the H2 buffer in it as well, which uh, if you were to try to fire this thing on fully automatic, you would require an H2 buffer to make it cycle properly. And also, if you notice this little green thing in the center there too. If you were to remove the actual pistol grip itself, and you, ha you have an Allen key in there, which you can actually adjust that, and what that does is it uh, adjusts the tension between the upper and lower receiver, so you can get rid of any of the wiggle that's in there. So overall, this rifle has a lot of very, very incredible uh, incredible features. Uh, you're, you're getting a lot of advancement in it. Uh, the receivers are definitely uh, proprietary. Uh, these are all proprietary to LWRCI. But again, you could put any mil-spec upper receiver <coughs> on this lower and put any LWRC upper on any mil-spec lower receiver. Uh, you do have the extended feed ramps uh, on the barrel extension, uh, extended feed ramps on the receiver itself. So you have all those benefits as well. You also have your fire cartridge case deflector. You also have a little bit of a groove in here as well that helps you get a little bit more of a consistent ejection pattern. Put that back together. There's definitely no question why this rifle would, have, would uh, definitely be one of the, uh, the American Rifleman's uh, Rifle of the Year. Um, this is, even though it's a, it's a drastic departure in operating systems from what LWRCI is used to, they, the execution was absolutely wonderful. Uh, they gave you uh, the exact same rifle that they have in their external piston uh, with the DI system. You know, going with the mid-length gas system also was another thumbs up. Uh, you know, I've definitely become over the years a convert over into the mid-length gas system as being a far more reliable uh, and, a, and really a reliability enhancement over the, the standard uh, carbine system. You know, and the reason why I say that is is by having the, uh, the longer uh, gas tube, you're increasing your dwell time within the cartridge case itself. So you're having that much more time for the cartridge case to actually start to contract so it can be easily, uh, much more easily uh, extracted and ejected from the chamber. Uh, your extractor also does not have to work nearly as hard as it does with the carbine length gas system. Well, we're now going to take the uh, LWRC individual carbine direct impingement rifle out to the range and we're going to see how she shoots.
Uh, the rifle performed flawlessly, um, just like you would have expected from LWRCI. The fit finish uh, quality uh, is exactly what you would expect to see from LWRCI. Um, this, uh, the rifle is not inexpensive by no means. Um, I'm not actually quite sure what the MSRP is on them. The, the rifle, uh, again, performed flawlessly. Accuracy was excellent. It shot much better than I could. And for those of you who are looking for a uh, really high-end uh, direct gas rifle uh, with all of the modern features of uh, the ambidextrous uh, free float uh, hammer forge barrel, uh, this is certainly a rifle to look at. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Please click like and please subscribe. Thank you.